Welcome back to Tennis Talk. My name's Cam Williams, and we have the 2021 edition of the Davis Cup happening this year. Of course, last year it didn't happen because of 2021. We know a lot of tournaments got cancelled, the Davis Cup being one of them. And we're still looking at this new format. We're still trying to get used to it from two years ago. 2019 was the first time we had this new format of everyone plays at the same time. Uh, back in the day, it used to be the Davis Cup was played throughout the year, and then the final between two teams was played at the end of the year. Everyone's playing at the end of the year. So let's go and check out the rules for the Davis Cup just to refresh our memory. All right, so 18 teams are going to be a part of this tournament. And the teams were actually chosen by the four semifinalists of the previous edition. So 2019, we had Spain, Great Britain, Canada, and Russia. So they got automatic entry into this year's tournament. 12 teams were picked from the qualifying rounds, which happened in March of last year. And two wildcard teams, which were announced at the end of 2019, were also submitted. And those two wildcard teams were actually France and Serbia. Now the way that it works is that we have six groups of three teams and everyone's going to play each other. So every team will play each other in best of three set matches. There'll be two singles and a doubles match. And very similar to the A to B Cup, the winner of each group will go to the quarterfinal stage and two of the next best teams, the so two teams that finish second in their group with the best records, will also go and make up the other two teams. So it gets a little confusing when we're talking about that, but from the quarterfinals onwards, it's a knockout tournament every single day. It goes for about 10 days as well, so that's what we're dealing with here. All right, let's start with the group stage now, and unlike two years ago, this tournament's actually played over three different countries for the group stage. We've got Group A. They'll be playing in Madrid with Spain, Russia, and Ecuador all playing, and you can see some of the big names there. You've got guys like Medvedev, Rublev, Karatsev. Very, very strong players in 2021. Also, Carino Busta for Spain. That could be an interesting matchup, especially if he plays Medvedev, the bronze medalist. And he also beat Medvedev at the Olympics a little bit earlier this year. So that would be very interesting to see. And also, Alcaraz for Spain as well. Not so many names for Ecuador to really mention, but quite obvious here that Team Russia are the best team, not only in this group, but in the competition. So Team Russia, very, very good singles team. But don't forget, their fourth best singles player is a silver medalist at the Olympics. Rublev and Karatsev have been very good on the double scene this year as well, getting some good wins. So Team Russia, they should get through this group. But team Spain do have some interesting players, so maybe they can make something happen against Team Russia. Group B now, we've got Canada, Kazakhstan, and Sweden. And the big names to watch out for, probably Public is probably the biggest name out of this group. Canada don't have their superstars. They don't have FAA. They don't have Shapovalov. It's going to be tough for Team Canada to kind of replicate what they did a couple of years ago, but Bublik, Kukushkin, there's some really good singles players there for Kazakhstan. And who knows, maybe the Ema brothers for Sweden can do something as well. So this group for me is actually kind of wide open. Who knows who's going to get out of this group, especially with Canada missing their superstars. Let's go to Group C now, which is a very tough group. We've got France, Great Britain, and the Czech Republic. Now, there's not too many big names for the Czech Republic, Vesely being the biggest name for them, but Great Britain and France both have very strong teams. Of course, the singles players for Great Britain, who have had really, really good seasons this year, Norrie and Evans, very, very solid stuff. They should win their singles matches, hopefully for them, but they've also got a good doubles team. Salisbury and Skupski, very good doubles team, but they'll be coming up against the French doubles team. Very, very strong. Herbert and Mahou, two of the best doubles players going around. So the doubles for Great Britain versus France might be the difference between who finishes on top of the group and who finishes second. Manorino, Gasquet, they're playing, but they're lower ranked players these days. Uh, but who knows? Maybe against Norrie and Evans, they can do something. Having a look at Group D now, and this is another group that's kind of wide open. You've got Croatia, Australia, and Hungary. And Australia does not have Nick Kyrgios, so they're missing the, the spearhead of the team. You've got Dimonor, who is the highest ranked player, so of course he's playing. Poprin, who's a very good young player as well. And then you've got Piers, who's a great doubles player for Australia. But Croatia, they have the best doubles team in the entire competition. The one and two doubles players in the world, Pavic and Mektic, very strong combination there. Not to mention Cilic is the number one singles player. Of course, Cilic hasn't been the great player he was in the last few years, but still. Marin Cilic, Grand Slam champion, got to watch out for him. Interesting to see how they go against Australia. So Croatia, Australia, very strong team in the doubles for Croatia versus the very young Australian combo in the singles. Very interested to see how that goes. And then, of course, Hungary. They've got Vucevic at the top, who is a very dangerous singles player. So maybe there can be some upsets in this one. Who knows? Based on teams, you'd probably say Australia has the best all-round team, but Croatia... If Marin Cilic is firing and the doubles combination are unbeatable, maybe they top the group in this one. Who knows? Going to Group E now, and we've got USA, Italy, and Colombia. And the Americans have a pretty solid team, a very good doubles combination with Ram and Sock. And then they've got Isna, Opelka, Tiafo. Very strong team all round. 
but they're also facing one of the toughest teams in the competition against Italy. Now, Berrettini is not playing for Italy. Of course, he got injured at the ATP Finals, but you've still got Sinner, Sonego, Fanini, and Musetti. Now, we don't really have a doubles combination there. I mean, Bellelli is a good doubles player, but who's he going to team up with to play the doubles with? So maybe the doubles, they'll struggle a little bit, but they've got a good singles combination, and maybe they can beat the Americans in the singles. And Colombia is also in that group. Unfortunately for Colombia, their singles team is probably not up to scratch. But they have a good doubles combination. Cabal and Farrar, very, very strong doubles combination. So they could maybe sneak a couple of doubles. I think the Americans versus the Colombians in the doubles, that'll be one of the best matches in the doubles for the tournament in the group stage. So definitely watch out for that one. And the final group is Group F. Now, this would have been a stacked group had the superstars played. Now, Serbia have their superstar. They've got Novak Djokovic. He is playing. Now, Germany do not have Alexander Zverev because he boycotts the Davis Cup. He's not a fan of this new format, so he is not playing. And, of course, Austria are missing Dominic Team. But this group would have been the group of death had the superstars been playing. I guess good for Djokovic and Serbia that they're not going to be playing the best teams that Austria and both Germany could do. But still got some strong players. Germany still have Kopfer. Struff, who have been very, very good in their singles careers, and especially this year with Kopfer, he's been pretty good. And they've got a good doubles combo as well, with Kravets and Putz teaming up in the doubles, which could pose some problems for Serbia. Now, of course, Serbia have Djokovic as the number one. He'll probably team up as well, maybe with Krajanovic and play some doubles. Uh, Kacic is a good doubles player, but I think Djokovic, Krajanovic, with their chemistry, they might be better suited. Either way, Djokovic is going to have to play a lot of matches in the Davis Cup to really drag Serbia through. Uh, unless Lajevic and Kranovic can do something in the singles, Djokovic is going to be doing a lot of the work for Serbia. So there you have it. They are the teams for the Davis Cup. And like I said, you know, after that, we've got uh, the teams that finish on top of each group. So six teams, the top of the group, they go to the quarterfinal stage. And then the teams the, with the best record that are second in one of the groups, uh, two of those teams will go through the quarterfinals as well. And then they'll just play a knockout tournament. Now, these are actually being played over different countries. So we've got one in Austria, we've got one in Italy, and we've got one in Madrid. But the finals will be played in Madrid. So they'll go to Madrid for the Davis Cup Finals, as they did a couple of years ago, where it was all based in Madrid. So it's a little different to what it was two years ago. They're still evolving this uh, concept, I guess, trying to replicate a similar thing to the HB Cup, which is a very good team competition. But look, they're trying. If you don't like the Davis Cup, I understand that. I kind of prefer the old version. I like the whole, having the whole year of like best of five sets. These are only best of three set matches. But let me know down in the comments below. Who do you think is going to win this? I'm going with Russia. I think Russia have got the best team all round. They've got the best singles combination. Uh, I don't think anyone's going to beat them in singles except for maybe Serbia because they've got Djokovic, of course. But I reckon they've got the best one-two punch going around. And of course, they've got a pretty solid doubles team as well. They might not even have to win the doubles. The singles might be enough for Team Russia to just win both singles events and then just have the doubles for fun. But let me know down in the comments below, who do you think is going to win the Davis Cup this year? The Davis Cup 2021, it's on this year. And it's got some big names playing.